By the time production started on Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge, the executives at Disney Channel had fully embraced the new millennium, and Halloween Town had to catch up fast. And I'm not just talking about the franchise, but the actual town itself and its weirdly vulnerable infrastructure. For instance, somehow the life force of every citizen is kept inside of a pumpkin in the town square. And it seems like a growing number of warlocks are using that to terrorize society. You gotta protect your data better than that. My privacy is so secure that I don't even know my own social security number. Whenever they ask for it on a government form, I just use the one that I memorized from a dead relative. And that that's the only way that I can truly prevent serious fraud and identity theft. And that's how you make it in the computer age, baby! And Disney Channel agrees with me, since they use the newness of the internet to pad out the painfully slow plot of this Halloween Town sequel, which really consists of nothing but a handful of claustrophobic sets, situations that just don't make sense, and a script that has our main character, Marnie, chasing around an endless string of magical objects. Wow, Disney, with this one, you really crank out those pointless plot movers like they were on sale for two for a dollar. It's called a MacGuffin, not a sausage McMuffin. A sausage McMuffin? Oh well, I guess apparently it wasn't enough that we destroyed Calabar years ago because now we have to kill his one remaining child when we go back to Halloween Town for another installment of Clip Breakdown. Halloween Lasso! <laughs> television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content on the web, and we break it like a Halloween curse into tiny little clips that we can examine like they're fragments of bone from my head being bashed in by this awful movie. <laughs> but before we get into Halloween Town 2, let me just ask you to make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you're ready for spooky content all of October. Also, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can get extra stuff. Like any good sequel on a Disney Channel movie, we had to begin with like a uh, previously on. So it's basically just Marnie in voiceover explaining that over the last two years, she hasn't been back to Halloween Town. They defeated Calabar, whatever. I'll let her tell the story. Halloween Town was always a happy place where creatures of different sizes and shapes and species some of them downright weird and she does mean only some of them since as we saw in the first movie certain species are like fantastic creatures with inarticulate rubber faces while others might be just some guy in a nylon cape or a just regular lady in a fun party wig when they were getting the extras ready for this movie you can tell they were like uh we have two options put on a heavy sweaty mask where you can't see or breathe or we paint your forearms white and call you a vampire. Uh, yeah, I would like the one where I have the full freedom of my face. I don't want to end up like Sadie here, my girl from the first movie who I will forever remember. Hello, Aggie. Hello, Sadie. Hello, Aggie. I'm obsessed with her. Where is her dance album? You can tell with this recap that they're mixing in footage from the first film, which seems to have been shot on location in an actual town. Whereas here in the second Halloween town, it looks much smaller as though it were constructed on a sound stage. So they're kind of combining shots from both of them here so that it transitions us into the new set. The reason for all of these extras having like masks that don't move is because they weren't using custom prosthetics that were glued on in sections that move with the human face. They're just, you know, a rubber mask that you put on. It would be so atypical for Disney Channel, but it almost seems like the sequel for Halloween Town had a smaller budget than the first one, or at least very similar. Anyway, I guess all of that exposition was Marnie talking into a chat room because she's like on this ghoul chat room. Again, 21st century. Mom and grandma are fighting again. What's going on at your party? Mm, I'm avoiding it. She said, ugh, I'm so tired of that giant face. The can of bile green paint that I picked out for this bedroom happened to be cursed. So now from time to time, the spirit of Benjamin Moore will appear and try to watch me get dressed. As I said, Halloween Town 2 makes a real effort to incorporate the digital age into the storyline. And I just noticed that Marnie's screen name is half and half, which probably refers to the fact that she's half witch and half mortal. But just to be clear, my love, that does not give you the right to check off multiracial on your college application 
petition forms. Being able to magically get whatever you want should not afford you any sort of affirmative action, okay? Because we already have that. It's called white privilege. Frankly, the plot of this movie is so sleepy that we can't go any further without shouting out the sponsor of today's video, Verb Energy. I've mentioned on this channel before, I get a midday crash a lot of the times and having a second cup of coffee makes me jittery. But Verb Energy bars give me a great midday boost without any of those coffee jitters. That's because these bars are infused with organic green tea. So while it has the same amount of caffeine as a shot of espresso, it doesn't have that crash that comes later. And they're only 90 calories made from recognizable ingredients. And I love being able to recommend them to you because they're gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegan. They're also great for before the gym. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to eat things that taste like garbage. I'm very happy with all of the flavors and the variety that I've been able to try with Verb. The trial kit is gonna give you the opportunity to sample their four best-selling flavors and one of my favorites, peppermint mocha. Verb is always releasing new flavors, but the best part is you can get your trial pack for just the cost of shipping, which is less than a dollar. Use the link in my description below to take advantage of this offer. Thank you so much to Verb for sponsoring today's video. Ow. They are still trying to figure out how to make texting and chatting online seem cinematic on movies. And in this case, they were like, we will have it be from a speech to text translator because she cannot read. Like, okay. I also don't know why Marnie is avoiding this Halloween party. I feel like she loves Halloween. Wouldn't this be like her party? Also, as you may remember, Agatha, Aggie, the grandmother, she agreed to live in the mortal world for the last two years at the end of the movie. So she's like living amongst mortals now and I don't know what her and her daughter are fighting about always. They just can't get along on anything. Someone has to take my place as head of the Cromwell line. And I know Marnie. It's just the stuff. Or me. I'd be good too. Oh really, Sophie? Then why is Marnie down here dressed like Merlin the Wizard while well, you came out here wearing a cardboard holographic cowgirl hat like it's your birthday party at the Texas Roadhouse? You are not the Supreme. Clearly, you should follow in the footsteps of your father and become a rodeo clown who gets mauled to death. We still don't know what happened to dad, and I now feel that's what happened. Gored by a bull and his horns in the face. They love this magic bag gag where she's like, I'm pulling out fun stuff from the bag. But for some reason, Judith Hogue, I can't remember the, oh, the mom's name is Gwen, but she's played by Judith Hogue. She's like not for it. She's like, I don't want these kids to have any type of fun that I didn't tell them to have. This step's over. We've got bobbing for apples right over there. Oh, yes, it's fun. It's fun. Like, why is she forcing her party guests to do things that they clearly don't want to do. She said, if you five-year-olds jump over to that bucket of water and stick your heads in it without any adult supervision, I'm gonna come over there and drown you myself. Why is she even hosting this party at her house right now? None of her kids seem to have any friends there or even any interest in being a part of it. But suddenly she's Miss Frizzle to every under 10-year-old in the neighborhood. I'm so confused by that. They never justify why this party's going on. Marnie, like, I wish they'd been like, Marnie begged for this party or like, you and your grandmother wore me down on this party because you said it was gonna, you know, like anything. They could have done anything, but they didn't. So now it just feels like this pointless party that nobody in the family wants to be at. Very arbitrary. But when Aggie and Gwen fight and storm off, both of the daughters go to soothe their parents and grandparents. Aggie is upstairs in her secret bedroom watching what's going on back home <gasps> at Hollow Round Town. Hi, Gord. I'm asking everyone for a small donation for the Halloween Town School. Forget it, Astrid. I don't give to charity. I guess this crystal ball allows Aggie to see what's going on with her friends back home because her magical powers supersede any reasonable expectation of privacy. Especially when she needs to drop in on two characters as they conspicuously mention each other's names, clumsily introducing themselves to the audience for when we see them again just a little bit. Do you want more clumsy exposition? I would love to give it to you. Here it is in my trick-or-treat bowl. That's core, right? Everything in the universe that gets lost, that other sock, the earring you put down for just a second, all end up in Gort's front yard. Are you saying somewhere in his front yard is that little baggie of coke I got accused of stealing in 2015? I need to get in touch with him and ask if there's any part of his front yard where the grasshoppers are acting really f 
paranoid and sketchy because I've got a point to prove. I will be exonerated. So as a reminder, Halloween is the only night that the portal is open between Halloween Town and the real world. And I don't want to get into it too much because this is already going to be a long video, but why is Halloween Town actually a whole planet slash world slash dimension? Is it a town or is it a world? Halloween world. Anyway, let's meet some old favorite friends. Oh, look, 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 there's Luke. Oh, he's becoming a fine young goblin. Grandmama, how can you even tell? That looks like bona fide footage from the first Halloween Town movie. It's like she's watching the DVD to get caught up for Calabar's revenge. Let's wrap up the recap, okay? I said trick or treat, not trick me into sitting through 10 minutes of exposition or treat me to a terrible movie. And right now, those seem like the only options. And a terrible movie, so shall we be treated. We see outside that Aggie is able to like hide the door of her secret room. Meanwhile, Marnie is talking to her mother about the use of magic and Marnie's future plans to spend a year in Halloween Town. Nothing's worth anything if you can get it just by wishing. That's what your dad taught me. Uh, I don't use magic for everything. I don't use it on tests. Is that one algebra test? You used your magic as a graphing calculator? It's like you want me to have to burn my own daughter at the stake, don't you? If you can't start long-handing those math problems, just remember I got a can of kerosene in the garage with your name on it, witchy. I'm just joking. Obviously, the witch trials of both the US and Europe were gruesome, horrible, and they were not caused by witches, obviously. It was caused by, uh, like, church politics, personal feuds, and unreliable accounts from people who are existing in systems of absolute authority. And that's why I'm allowed to laugh about it. <laughs> what? You can't actually, no one's gonna be mad at me for, look, American Horror Story Coven, they were burning people at the stakes all the time. What are, 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 Okay, let's see what else. Marnie, you can't pick and choose. If you go to Halloween Town for a year, that's gonna become your life. You're gonna be a stranger in this world after that. Explain how. In the first movie, Aggie said that two hours in the mortal world could feel like two days or two weeks in Halloween Town. So if Marnie spent a year of mortal time in Halloween Town, how would that make her a stranger? Wouldn't it just feel like a thousand years to her? <laughs> like she would be like an old lady when she came back? Maybe that's what she means. But like, that's a big decision because you'll never see your family again. But then how does Aggie come back? Also later, we see characters communicating from between the two worlds simultaneously. So I really need everybody to get it together with the space-time continuum on this All Hallowed Eve. Before I call up my good friend Stephen Hawking, pro skateboard, and have him kickflip you into another dimension. I ate some candy corn right before this and I think all of the syrups are just now getting absorbed by my stomach lining and I am feeling the Halloween spirit move through me. Halloween is the best time of the year. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, so next at the party, a, 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 a charming young man and his father show up. All witches were as pretty as you, they'd uh, have a better reputation. Thanks. I hope you like lime, green's my favorite color. Uh, is the rest of your family coming too? Oh, it's just me and Cal. Oh. She said a single father with a British accent. Oof, I'm gonna need to sit on one of these frozen buckets you just handed me because my sex organs just lit up like a jack-o'-lantern. Everyone just let her cool off for a few minutes and you can come have a bowl of this melted lime flavored soup. Cal is quite the little char. I don't trust him from the get-go and neither should you. You wanna give me a tour? Sure. Let's go this way. <laughs> that girl said Finally, I've been hovering around these cupcakes for the last 10 minutes. I guess your magical powers couldn't sense how in the way you're being. Again, I find this location, the Halloween party, to be a little bewildering, a little unnecessary, and highly confining. You know, like, I feel like there's 12 people and they're just moving them around the room. I don't understand the age ranges of these people. I don't understand the, whose party it is. And then we go from this to another school party later. So it's like really hard for my brain to separate the two. I wish they could have found some other sort of community event or whatever for this to be. Like maybe they're out on the porch take doing the Halloween costume parade or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's check in with Dylan, who was in the first movie, of course, as the brother, but now his voice has changed. Uh, so has anyone asked you to go with them to the costume party at the high school? Why? Did you want to ask me? That was bad behavior. I live for Vampire Girl, which yes, is her actual credited role in this movie. She's played by Jessica Lucas of Cloverfield, Evil Dead. She was in The Covenant. She said, mm, why don't you just hold on a second while I take out this slobbery mouthpiece? 
No. I can't believe they wouldn't give this character a name. Disrespectful. That depends on whether or not that would be ridiculous. Dylan, you're not even wearing a costume. Oh, I thought he was dressed as the kid from that Stephen King book who was very interested in World War II, but like in a bad way. I would almost say it's giving me Harry Potter, but I don't remember the books describing that character having a totalitarian government haircut. Most disgusting costume wins a prize after the unmasking at midnight. Most disgusting costume? What a weird category. I would just show up with all my psoriasis plaque shedding everywhere. Yeah, you like that in your Parmesan crisps, everyone? So Marnie's showing Cal, this young man, around, but he doesn't seem super impressed with her bedroom. So she's like, well, let me show you this secret room, my grandma's room. And she starts talking about all of the magic and witchery and stuff. And I'm like, this is why the magic in Halloween Town would be exposed within like a day of mortal time because little children cannot keep their mouths shut about more, like huge secrets like this. You're gonna tell. See, there are common spells that every witch knows. And then, they're the really secret ones that are only known to the witch who made them up. Or warlock. That's what male witches are called, right? Uh, okay, then I guess in that case, I would just identify as a magical robe-wearing person. Ooh, I'm gonna use that as my description on Cameo so people book me thinking I'm Stevie Nicks. Oops, sorry, nope, it's Nick's Stevie, and there are no refunds. Just like a white winged dove, rubber gloves, that's all I'm bringing. So Marnie is trying to play it all off like, oh, I'm, I'm just a big fan, I read about this stuff. So you've been doing some reading too. Oh, uh, just movies and stuff, but they're not really that educational. Or that consistent. Since the most popular book series and movies about magic at this time called male magical people wizards, not warlocks. But again, why not just go with like magical wand wavers, wand waving people, people waving their magical dicks around, but the dicks are sticks and they're magic. <laughs> That's my new commercial for Harry Potter. By the way, my family, my mom and dad are visiting me and my sister who lives in LA and we're going to Universal Harry Potter World. Maybe I'm showing you pictures of it right now. Who knows? So Marnie quickly realizes she's like, ooh, we should get out of this secret room because I'm telling him basically everything that matters. So do you like ice cream? Sure. Oh my God, hold on. That was lime ice cream your dad brought, not sherbet? And you better answer honestly because these words are not interchangeable. The Food and Drug Administration has often classified and reclassified what we call frozen desserts based on their varying levels of milk fat. It's an effort that helps keep Americans safe and healthy. Meanwhile, the National Rifle Association is practically handing out pistols at the local high school because some 300 year old dead guy said so, who also thought it was okay to own other people. Why does the name of the sludge that comes out of the machine at Dairy Queen have to get updated more often than the laws that protect American citizens from the dangers of homegrown terrorists. I really wonder, I wonder so much. Everyone's getting their bowl of lime ice cream. <laughs> show me the receipts. I've never seen lime ice cream. It definitely exists though, so don't show me the receipts. Cal is like, well, there's a school dance a little later and I'm not a student yet, but maybe you can get me in or whatever. Pick you up in an hour? Sure. Meaning you is everything I hoped it would be. Uh, never mind. Don't pick me up in an hour because you just looked at me like young Darth Vader or something. Also, the only thing worse than someone trying to impress you with a magic trick is doing it with a magic trick that also bestows you with a single rose as though we're in Renaissance times. Take the 99 cents you spent on that at the bodega and put it towards some horny goat weed or a black and white cookie that you can watch me eat before we dryly make out. You like these crummy lips? <laughs> Sandpaper, sandpaper. Speaking of, where's my lip oil? Oi, she's dry. Can you guys hear that I'm getting over a cold? That's such a YouTuber thing to say. Sorry, my voice sounds weird, I have a cold, but it's true. And I wouldn't say it if my voice wasn't, I'm hyper aware of it. I'm really not focusing. <laughs> So Marnie doesn't see it, but Cal leaves that party and instantly does a magic spell to portal back to Halloween Town. So we know something's up. He stole that spell book. Meanwhile, things are immediately wrong back at the party. As soon as the spell book's gone, Aggie's magic bag no longer works, which has never ever happened before. That spurs Aggie to be like, oh, well, we have only four hours till midnight. We better get back to my house so that I can see what's up with this magic bag. So they go up and ask um, if 
if they can go in front of Cal's dad, who Gwen is really hitting it off with. So she's like, okay. Even though you know Gwen wouldn't want her daughter just randomly running to Halloween Town, potentially getting trapped there for a year without talking about it, which is why she prevents Sophie from going. Mom! Sweetheart, it's your bedtime. Why don't you go upstairs and start getting ready? Wait, so you're just gonna keep hosting this kid's party when none of your kids are even there? Whose party is this? Where are all these kids' parents? Cause some of them are younger than Sophie. And I saw two of them laying on the front steps that really looked like they could have used an EpiPen and that was an hour ago. I think you were too busy scooping ice cream to ask about food allergies and the Snickers bars. I'm gonna get angry comments about talking about kids dying. <laughs> Those kids that I just talked about didn't die. They survived. They had an allergic reaction and then they survived, okay? See how that somehow, like, if that makes you feel better, just do that in your head. They're hypothetical children that don't exist, is my point. Shut up, Nick, just keep going. The, so, uh, Aggie and Maggie are like, let's do it. We should have a stranger there for all our family discussions. If she wants to check on us, you tell her to call me on my headphone. Another on-screen dessert, another one of those unconvincingly conservative bites that actors love to do. The formula for eating food on screen is always the same. Take a teeny tiny taste of food and then chew nothing and over-examine it until your next line of dialogue. Mm. Mm -hmm. Grandma, but like, mama, stop. <laughs> like, okay, once Marnie finishes absorbing that buttercream through her mucous membranes, let's continue on our journey, shall we? So grandma produces these headphones that are like literally walkie talkies, but they look like shrunken heads. But already we're having trouble getting to Halloween town. Gestum ex alius mundus nos te apello ut aduco damus. I'm sorry, but I still can't take Marnie seriously when she casts these spells. I think they're mostly in Welsh, but you can tell she has no idea what she's saying. So it's just like, everyone get ready for my magical spell. <gasps> and then all of a sudden the next spell is gonna be like in pure modern English. It just has to rhyme, like, okay. Because it's mysteriously, her spell's not working, yet they have to put their hands together and combine magic. So I guess their magic is weakened by at least 50%, but they are able to get the door once they touch their sweaty palms together. Through the portal, we take our leave. Four hours till midnight. We'll be back in plenty of time. <laughs> Well, is it four hours or is it six? Because that sign just changed. You know what? I don't even care. As long as we're rolling the credits within 60 minutes here in my non-holiday town where time is standardized. Now we have this thing where it's like back and forth between the mortal world and Halloween town, which brings up lots of plot holes about the time differences, but whatever, get over it. She's like, you know what? The next time I have a Halloween party, I'm not putting out chamber pots. Too much extra work. Cal is flirting with her all the time. Would you consider being my date for the costume party? At the high school? Oh, I'm sure they can always use more chaperones. Yeah, but I don't think a chaperone can be just any adult who shows up to a place where a bunch of kids are. That kind of misses the point of making sure nobody gets abducted. Your kid isn't even enrolled at the school and you have a British accent when he doesn't. I don't think we need to have read Lolita to understand why this is not a person who we want standing next to the punch bowl at a high school dance. Suspish, fish. But of course in this town, they're like, yeah, sounds like a great idea for two grown adults to go to a high school party. Dylan's gets an idea though that things are not what they seem. Thanks for stopping by. That's me with my GERD. Thank you for this digestive representation, Disney. Dylan even sees a frog on the ground once that guy leaves. And then when Marnie and Grandma get to Halloween Town, everything is in grayscale. The Halloween pumpkin is a big brick wall and cheerful Astrid, who we just saw, is acting strange, which is exactly what happened in the first Halloween Town movie. Like we knew something was wrong when Aggie's friend suddenly acted different. Hi, Astrid. What's happened to you? What do you mean? And your shoes. Sensible shoes are important. Okay, and painting your ears the same color as your face is what, unimportant? I don't even know what kind of smurfy, derfy, don't wake daddy creature you're supposed to be, but the mismatched ears are all I can notice about this makeup right now. Latex appliances, like these ears degrade under like the oils that are in a lot of face paints, like a mineral oil. Any face paint that has a petroleum base to it. Or face paint gets absorbed differently into latex or silicone than it does into the skin. So it ends 
ends up looking like a different opacity. You need to use rubber mask grease paint to get like a true color on those appliances because it seals over the latex with castor oil or linseed oil, non-petroleum bases. Just some info for you. Those ears are not it. Oh, they also run into Cal who has mismatched goblin ears too. And he doesn't look like the goblin that he was in the first movie. He's turned completely normal. And Aggie is like, oh, everybody's acting so boring. They're like a caricature of what we think humans are like here in Halloween town. The same way you guys dress up as witches and goblins on Halloween, we make fun of you too. So it's like, <laughs> so they know now that there's a spell being put over Halloween Town and Marnie says like, well, the way we reverse a spell is to just say it backwards. So they need Dylan back at home to go grab that spell book so they can find this gray spell and repeat it backwards. Just do it, Dylan, or I'll spam your diary all over the net. That's ruthless, Marnie. I can't believe you would threaten to digi-upload his e-journal to the Webernetter. I feel like in the early thousands, TV writers were still trying to nail down how kids were talking about going online. I never once have heard someone refer to it as the net or the web in real life. And I would remember because I would make fun of them. Oh, a good example of the appliance not being painted properly on the wound is 13 Reason Why season one, that kid's head wound, oh, rough. So Dylan reports that there is no spell book there and we get the reveal. Over here. How? Seasonal allergies and sinus pressure can make your head feel like a brick. But thanks to Flonase antihistamine nasal spray, you can get back to feeling <laughs> like you. I mean, they clearly didn't have a huge budget on this movie, but who thought it would be intimidating to have the main antagonist constantly show up on hard surfaces as a protruding face, like the parasitic twin in Malignant. He looks like one of those creepy coin banks that they sell at the museum gift shops. We get a lot of exposition here at the end of the first act. Oi. The tour of the house. It was just to get the book. No, I could have stolen the book anytime. See, I wanted you to show it to me because you felt something between us. Oh, so you weren't just wasting my time by secretly being a huge cement block with no discernible genitals, but also because you didn't even need the spell book you stole from my house. Like you don't even, you didn't even need to come meet me. That means that literally the only thing you accomplished by going to the party was alert the Cromwells to your evil plan. And you wouldn't have known that she had feelings for you until after you showed up. So it doesn't make sense. Aggie reveals that the book that Cal stole wasn't her only copy of the spell book. She had two copies and the other one was in her house. I think, I, why why couldn't they have made it like, oh, she puts half of her most important spells in each book, so Cal did need both books in order to, you know, complete his plan, then it would feel a little more motivated. I wanna know why Calabar. You always did let your magic do the talking. I should have known when he gave me the rose. I mean, should you have? That was barely even a throwaway gag in the first movie. But now they want to be like, of course, it was Calabar's signature move to pull a flower out of his ass to impress the girl he wanted to f which is a genetic trait that gets passed on to his son. Uh. Cal even said, like, uh, they're like, Calabar never mentioned having a son, and he's like, we weren't close. Then why are you avenging his death? I guess I inherited my father's attraction to Cromwell witches. Okay, I know that your face is on a brick wall right now, but why are you as an actor suddenly performing with the personality of a brick? He sounds like Luke Wilson being put under nitrous oxide for a root canal. I guess I inherited my father's attraction for Cromwell witches. Like, are you okay? I, I I can only imagine why this is the performance we got when he's like a face in the wall. I think for the effect, they had to have him like put his face in an actual hole in a green screen, maybe with face paint or maybe not. But like, I think that that physically restricting him also translated to him having a really soft, like you could be still being like, I guess I inherited my father's attraction to Cromwell witches. Like you could still have vocal inflection without moving your head. I don't know why he's talking so slow and monotone like that. It's so weird. But he does say like, oh, you turned everyone against my father and destroyed him. So that's why he's getting revenge. It's like, you just said you weren't close to him though. Anyway, they need to get to the Cromwell house, Aggie's house to get the book. Benny? Wow. Uh, need a ride? 
Have we met? But the last time, you were just skin and bones. <laughs> Except for the skin. And frankly, he only looks marginally more healthy now. Grey Benny looks exactly like that uncle everyone has who was like a lifetime smoker. Unfortunately, the grey spell has found its way to Aggie's house, so they have to tear it apart looking for the spell book. Okay, yes. So then, yeah, no. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, it's okay. Oh, uh, no. What in the Alvin and the Chipmunks Halloween hunt have we got going on here? Turns out there is something more obvious than a trying on outfits montage to kill time in the second act. And that's two minutes of really fast looking for something. It's awful, but like Marnie is talking about how they're tearing the place apart and suddenly <gasps> Luke turns back to his normal self. The gray spell goes away. He's in his troll makeup. So they think that the spell wore off basically. And Aggie realizes that since the book is lost, she knows it's gonna be in in the front yard of that guy Gork, Gork, Porg, the guy who's where all the lost stuff shows up. Meanwhile, back at the house, do you see how this movie sucks so bad? To celebrate, Cal and I found a terrific mask for you. <laughs> oh, it's... You don't like it. She's like, well, I just don't really see myself as a crazy-eyed, red-haired demon goblin, but glad to know that's what you and your son thought of for me. Anyway, no, I'm probably just gonna do a smoky eye and draw on some cat whiskers with eyeliner. While all the party guests are gone, the mom realizes, she's like, I can't go, I have to watch Sophie, and Dylan's going to the party, and Dylan's like, no, I couldn't get a date, you guys go and have fun. Dylan, no, you've been looking forward to this for weeks. Let's face it, mom, I'm just not that into Halloween. You guys go, you can make it up to me later. Okay, so now two grown adults are going going to attend a high school dance where neither of them have children in attendance. They're really painting a desperate looking picture of the single parent dating scene in this movie, aren't they? Also, if Dylan's been looking forward to this party for weeks, then why is he like, I'm just not that into Halloween, face it. It's like, well, you obviously were into something about the idea of going to the party. Anyway, they get to Bork's house. I'm gonna call him Bork. And he's normal now too. He's gray and boring. He's like trying to match socks and they're like, ugh, they're so boring. But that's not all. The spell is spreading. Uh, Grandma, what's happening? Well, Marnie, it's either that magical gray spell that's been affecting the whole town, or your grandmother has late stage chronic kidney disease. Oh, sorry, in Halloween Town, they probably call that the candy corn crazies or something. Either way, it's terminal. The grandma turns fully gray, and it's a bad sign, and Cal shows up in the fire. I'm like, I'm gonna. Oh, I hate this kid. You've been spying on us this whole time. Oh, I didn't need to. You see, I already knew about Aggie's little spell book. That's why I knew you'd end up at Gort's. Oh, okay, so the floating head knows everything, and he's just sending us on this chase for no reason. Every time we talk to this character, it's like, you stole that book to cast a spell. Yes, even though I didn't even need the book because I already had the spell. You've been spying on us. Yes, even though I already knew exactly where you were going to be. Okay, so then why are we going on this seasonal October adventure? It seems like you have everything you need for your evil plan. Why can't he just like commit his Halloween genocide or whatever and let me move on to start reviewing Christmas movies? Throughout it, he's kind of like, you can still go with me to the dance, you know, like trying to flirt with her a little bit. I think they should make his motivation to marry Marnie a lot stronger. For example, like I, everyone knows you can't truly take over Halloween Town without the power of two full witches or warlocks. So if you join me, like he should be trying to convince her to join the side and like maybe she has some weaknesses or faults that he's playing in to try to lure her in like using Sophie as like a bargaining token because they really reduce Sophie's role in this although I kind of get it once you see her act but Marnie's like mm, I would never marry you even though your face is made of fire they're realizing the full extent of the plan and like they've just been walking into this guy's trap the whole time it's a spell that was banned after the dark time he turned the creatures into humans, and now he's gonna turn the humans into creatures. Oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. That's, uh, I mean... <laughs> At this point, I'd be like, oh no, sounds terrible. So can we just go, like, fill up the black cauldron or light the magic jack-o'-lantern or whatever the f it takes to get that portal open because it is almost midnight on Halloween mama I should be out at the club right now letting someone explore my magic portal Then they'll see something really gray and lifeless for a change. Ooh, it's dead in there. No feeling back at the party Sophie's learning what's up Golems are built entirely from mud or other natural elements You said you saw a frog on the floor just after Cal's dad left and then later he shows up in a giant frog costume What is this some sort of biblical plague thing? <laughs> no Dylan, there's 
nothing biblical about witchcraft, and we would never make that association here on Disney Channel. Does he not realize that conservative Christian message boards exist now? Jesus, he needs to shut the f up. I think what Dylan meant to say is that in Halloween Town, this cheesy kids book is like their version of the Bible, in the sense that his entire family is obsessed with it, and it conveniently has an answer for everything. So we learned that the dad is probably one of these golems. Whether you like it or not, you're a Cromwell too. And that means you feel things just like we do. Tell me you don't feel like something's wrong. I don't feel like something's wrong. I feel like everything's wrong with your delivery of that line. When it comes to Emily Roas, the actress who plays Sophie, I get the feeling that her biggest projects in between these Halloween Town movies were just like regular elementary school book reports. Her eyebrows were stuck in one position, concerned face emoji for the entirety of what could have been her most powerful line of dialogue. Whether you like it or not, you're a Cromwell. And that means you feel things like we do. And tell me you don't feel that something's wrong. Me getting a daytime Emmy. Sophie canceled. <laughs> Just kidding. It's hard to be a child actor. I would never want to, like, how are you going to get a kid to act? They don't know what the f is going on. When I see, like, a truly talented child actor, like those kids who are always in movies, you're, I'm like, damn, they really get it. So basically now Cal has trapped Marnie and her friend. Since Cal has locked them in Porg's house or whatever, they have no choice but to go back in time, try to find the book. So it's getting convoluted, obviously. I feel like as soon as you're bringing up time travel as like the most obvious solution to the predicament you're in, we've hit like ultimate levels of I'm checking out of this movie. <laughs> Okay, I say we head back to the mortal world. The spell, it's coming back. Grandma, what's happening? Well, Marnie, it's either that magical gray spell that's been affecting the entire town or your grandma has late stage chronic kidney disease. Yeah, I can time and space and angles too, mama. This is YouTube. I can do whatever I want on here, except for that list of hundreds of things that I can't do. At this point, I feel like the movie is Harry Pottering so hard that they're gonna just start casually calling Marnie her Marnie, just to see if anyone notices. Disney's like, and now announcing our third movie, Halloween Town and the Inmate of Alcazar. Can we get that cleared by legal? So they go back in time and then they go too far to caveman time and then she comes back and Cal's like, confronting her in Porg's house at some era in history. You better stop breaking in on my spells. It's against the code of Merlin. That was me when hospital staff confiscated the iPod touch I was using to access my grinder account. I was like, I'm just trying to check in with a friend who's having a really hard time right now. And they'd be like, oh really? Cause you're experiencing meth induced psychosis. So maybe check in with yourself first. Do an internal check in before you start helping others. No shame in the disease of addiction, everybody. You can do it. The code of Merlin depends on it. Besides, what do you want to hang around a bunch of moldy old creatures for anyway? These creatures are my friends. My best friends, most of whom I've never met personally or haven't seen, spoken to, or thought about for two years. How is it not clear to you and the entire audience that I'm basically family to that blue guy that we saw and the werewolf, I think. Also, there was a sweaty ghost, if I remember correctly, loved him. My friends. Also, see how the Cal's vocal performance became so much more natural when he has full use of his body? It's like, oh, I'm glad they finally got him taken off that Thorazine drip. That was a real distraction in the act acting and in the direction for me. Marnie is able to break out of whatever this spell is and ends up with Luke back in time, like 50 years ago, before the book. Right, okay, right. So this is why this movie sucks. So they've gone back in time far enough to like basically, Gorp is like, oh, if something gets lost in my house, it's gone forever. So they had to go back in time 50 years before to when it was still messy. I think I've got something messed up, but whatever. The two kids at home have to get to the high school dance to warn their mom that she's on a date with a golem. Golem. Hey! See, this is exactly why families should not be messing around with curses or witchcraft or other devilish deeds. In this household, the closest we come to practicing the dark arts is when we use black construction paper. And even that, I keep locked away in a safe hidden behind my loaded guns. They're looking all around the Gorp's house for this <gasps> book. They can't find it. Calabar bought it from me about uh, 50 years ago. That means Cal must have had grandma's 
other spell book all along. And the only reason he took it out of our house is to stop you from undoing the spell. Oh, okay, I guess. Although I gotta be honest, as we enter the third act, I'm like barely grasping this plot. Like I'm more clear on the story of how this scene was shot after a union lunch break because Luke's troll wig has clearly been taken off and put back on several times without too much touching up. So the book isn't there, it's gone. He sold it to Calabar a long time ago. The books are really confusing. I came all this way for nothing. Oh. But imagine how tired we are. Imagine how tired we are of it. A great way to tell that your sequel is unjustified is if every step of the adventure is quickly proven pointless and then the characters themselves openly admit that they are doing things for no reason. The kids reach their mom and they're trying to convince her that basically the dad is a frog. Meanwhile, Marnie has the realization that the Bell, back when it wore off of Luke, wasn't actually wearing off. She must have accidentally said the spell backwards. So they're trying to repeat what she said to find the hidden phrase that undid his spell. I know, it's awful. Like, what is this? The New York Times crossword puzzle? Something to get us out of this trap. Uh Trappa? Yeah, it's a part backwards. Yay, the two main characters are solving a word search now. Such Halloween fun. They find out that it is Trappa or a part that casts a spell or takes it off because they realize that it's working with Borky, Torky, Porky, Worky, Torgy. Meanwhile, back at the party, Gwen gets the proof she needs that there is magic afoot. Run, look. Oh, that's not normal. That mom is like, actually Dylan, lots of cultures eat insects. It's not that strange. Anyway, frog man, how many inches is that tongue of yours? Did we exchange numbers? But no, the mom does a spell. The dad turns into a pile of frogs and she's like, oh my God, we're being tricked. Do you want something else that sucks to happen? Cool. At Borg's house or whatever, Marnie and Luke can't get back to their regular time period because she set down the time travel spell and lost it. So it's gone forever. I can't remember the spell. You have to. Why don't we just use my timeline? Your what? Oh, sorry, that's just another convenient deus ex magica that instantly solves our seemingly impossible conflict. I just didn't feel like bringing it up until now because, you know, it's gotta be a 90 minute movie. Actually, no, mercifully, this one is 80 minutes. And you know what? If this movie were my child, I would leave it at a fire station. That's the truth. So the timeline is something that a wizard left in his closet at some point. Like, we're really just cast in a wide net of bullshit right now. The timelines tell us what year it is in the mortal world. You know, that looks just like a Stephen Hawking description of a non-stellar black hole. Theoretically, black holes can accelerate time. Does that mean it can hurdle me into the end credits of this movie so fast that I explode? Because theoretically, that's the only way I'm gonna give a shit about your magic physics mashup. It's not cool, Marnie. It's not cool, we get it. You go to AP Physics. Who cares? Get in the hole. Marnie has this cool broom in this movie, even though I don't know where she would have flown this since she was in the mortal world for the last two years. Look, get on. Could you lower it a little? You see, the broom represents Marnie's penis and it's too big for Luke's tight little what? I went to film school, so everything I say during a movie is valid. At the party, as they're counting down to that midnight unmasking, Cal is up in the rafters getting ready to do the spell that will turn them all into creatures. But Marnie gets back in time to reverse the spell on her grandmother, and then it's like minutes before midnight, so she only has a couple seconds to try to get back to the mortal world and help stop Cal from casting the spell that's gonna turn her mother into a goblin. But the portal closes, and and she's unable to do it. So, Cal jumps down and wreaks havoc. What is here? What's going on? Oh, we found our new Sadie, everybody. What's going on? The way that these inanimate monster masks stay looking rubber gumby, oogity boogity, latex lips flapping like a flashlight throughout both of these first movies, it, it just always astounds me. They could have used tricks to frame around the obvious fact that the mouth can't move, like just do an over the shoulder every time a creature is supposed to be talking, like we'll get the idea. I promise you, like it's gonna look better than that. <laughs> but this part I thought, I was like, now there's something at least interesting happening. All of these innocent party goers are being turned into monsters. I love anything where like things go wrong at the school dance. Very black prom from Carrie White from Carrie. <laughs> 
love the idea of a bog witch taunting her own daughter with a creepy lullaby. These are the types of things that probably made me into such a horror-loving queer adult. I'm not suggesting that Disney Channel turned me queer, unless you all think that that's a viable class action lawsuit we could get in on to pay off our student loans. Let me know. I'll make the posters. Disney made me gay. Disney made me gay. Disney made me gay. Disney, 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 Disney made me gay. Disney's like, we didn't make you gay. We just put colorful things on screen and you twirled to them. So, so they get on the headphones, the family, they're like, we have to create our own spell to open this magic portal, even though that was heretofore seen as a physical impossibility that we've known about for forever. Now, I guess if we just really want it to be different, we can make it up. There's no spell for this. We'll just have to make up our own. What am I supposed to do? Stop thinking about it, Dylan. Just feel it. Yeah, seriously, Dylan, isn't this the same exact thing we had to tell you in the climax of the first movie? We need whatever shrimpy, stupid magic DNA that made it into your system so we can come together and defeat this evil bad guy. How come this kid had to redo his entire character arc once he hit puberty? Marnie needs help on her end too from someone who's also not a warlock. I need somebody who believes that anything is possible. Do you believe that? If you're there, yeah. Boo! This friendship never felt real to me. Boo! Oh, sorry, it's Halloween, so boo! Luke has lived his entire life in a magical land and is he himself some sort of goblin. So I think he can probably believe in your little magical spell, Marno. Just hold his unpainted hand and get it over with. I'm losing it. All of them talk together. Family, 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 family. From now on, we each can create a portal and each of us our own path to die. Okay, so we're gonna have to rehearse that a few more times. This is called a rhythm, children. We stay on the beat. Okay, start now. Like, they're all talking not, I can't understand what they're saying. They're basically making a spell to be like, from now on, we can all open the portal whenever we want, not just on Halloween for some reason. I guess this family can decide the entire rules of the world, but it works. They're able to enter the portal and come back to the magical land where everyone at the Halloween party is like, we're crazy creatures now. Our faces don't move. <coughs> but Cal has the two magic books and he's like, come and try to get them. But there's like scary vines all around and he's like, my darkness will instantly grab you or whatever. And she's like, well, my family's lightness is gonna defeat your darkness. So now I'm like, eh, okay, it's literally come down to like yellow against black. This is very arbitrary. And the, the way that they end up like winning, this will really leave you cold. <laughs> Wait, so for the final battle scene, she just had to grab those two books without dying? I mean, they did look a little heavy to snag one-handed like that, but why did they use dramatic slow motion on the pained facial expression she made in her close-up? The screenwriter said, I'm gonna think of a really cinematic, clever way for Marnie to win back those spell books from Cal. But for this first draft, he'll just give them to her. And then Disney was like, nope, actually that works great for our budget as is. We'll just add some cartoon licorice strings around the bad guy to really make it sizzle, you know? Kids don't know So just like that, they defeated everybody. Everybody's going back to normal. Wow, I just had the weirdest dream. Was I asleep? No, vampire girl, you were having a really bad trip and screaming at everybody that there were monsters everywhere. Stacy's actually really pissed at you because you practically ruined her and Sean's one year anniversary. Um, uh, so they go back to Halloween Town and say trappa to everything and restore everything and everyone's happy. I'm so over this. Well, this worldwide web I've heard about, mm -hmm. does it involve spiders? Grandma, you've been living in our guest bedroom for the past two years. Don't act like you've never heard of the internet before. Yeah, mom told me how she made you a Hotmail account and you blew your social security check on Halloween virtual slot machines and softcore vampire pornography. We know they don't show that type of weird in your dollar store crystal ball. And that's all she wrote for Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. Well, two of four of these movies. There's Halloween Town High 
and Return to Halloween Town, which is the one where Marnie was recast. So there we go. Let me know if we should continue this trilogy within October, but for me, in my time, I would rather just move right on to something truly scary and cheesy, like we did with Ouija Shark or Candy Witch. You let me know. We've got a whole month to figure it out. Also, I need short stuff that's scary too. Also, if you want to see more Halloween content like this, then give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps support this channel. And most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications, and you'll always be the first to know when I'm handing out trick-or-treat candy for the children. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access virtual watch parties and exclusive bonus content. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for going back to Halloween Town and killing a child. We did that. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.